this is a sight. This is a spectacle. Jim, well, I guess the sun's not really out. It's kind of, uh, this. Speaking of us, it kind of looks like shit out. But it's daytime. It's daytime, all right. A nice, cool 3.30. Honestly, I probably would have been better off even lifting a little bit earlier. Right? Because let's um, just think about this. What happens around 3 o'clock, 2.30, right? School gets out. They let those gosh dang high schoolers roam the streets. So usually there's kind of, during a normal week, there's sort of two hot spots when gyms are going to be packed. 2.30 to maybe 4? Well, eh. Maybe it's not that intense. Maybe I'm just being a complainer. But usually after school gets out, and then after people get done with work. So I'd say usually 5 o'clock and 3 o'clock are usually spikes in the gym's population. But since I've got arms not too worried because I really don't need much. I really don't need much equipment to get a good arm day in. All I need is well oh, it's not like I just want to do well we'll see but cables and dumbbells plus some easy bars that adds up to a pretty crazy arm day and I can say that with certainty. So I'm going to recreate the arm day from a few days ago, the last one I did. I've been doing all tries, followed by all buys. So, you know, seven, eight sets of pushdowns, seven, eight sets of curls or so, until I feel fully pumped, as well as, uh, you know, let's just say stimulated. But I went back to a, kind of a back and forth style I hadn't done for a while with two sets of pushdowns followed by two sets of curls, back and forth, back and forth, until I felt like the, uh, the workout was done, which happened at about set number six. No, no, set number seven. Yeah, I did two sets of tries, two of buys, back and forth um, about three times, and then finished with just one set of pushdowns and one set of curls. So that ended up working pretty gosh dang well so I don't know if I want to do like one set alternating like one set of pushdowns and then one set of curls I think that might be a little bit too uh, let's just say a little bit too frequent but the two and two style that is fucking killer so that's probably what it's gonna be today two sets of you know bent bar pushdowns Two sets of dumbbell curls, two sets of, honestly, I might just repeat that same kind of pushdown again. I really like the feeling of it. Two curls, and then just repeat until it becomes difficult to even bend my arms. That is one thing which I, um, <laughs> I haven't had for a little while, is tries and buys both. <sighs> <clears throat> tries and buys both fully pumped at the same time. Because right? usually if I do all triceps first, then triceps are fully pumped. But by the time I start buys, the tricep pump is kind of decreasing while the bicep pump is, you know, moving up to its max. So there's never really a moment where my arms are fully pumped in that way or in that style. So whether or not that's any better for muscular development it feels fucking sick. So I think that's how I'm gonna go about it. But I think arm days, they don't get that bad of a rep, but I do get, or I do hear a lot of hate on arm days. Arms and shoulders, for the same reason. People hate on them because they say it's just a repetitive lift. Mm. Oh my goodness. Because what are you really doing? You know, what are you really doing for shoulders? Right? Five, six sets of lateral raises. Every set's pretty much the same thing. 
five, six sets of face pulls or reverse lateral raises. Right. Ten or you know eight or so sets of curls, eight or so sets of push downs. I could see how somebody could see that and think, oh, this is kind of a boring workout. But I just think you've got to disconnect between why you're doing it in the first place. You know, if you want to build your arms and make it so that you have to fucking specifically wear or don't wear you know, kinds of shirts because the sleeves are too small and you feel like you're kind of cutting off your circulation, then <laughs> there's no way in hell you're going to get bored of doing eight sets of dumbbell curls in a row. If anything, I like the simplicity of arms because there's nothing to think about. You know, when I do a back day or a chest day, in between sets, I'm like, okay, maybe I should do this. Maybe I should move on to that. Ah, but, but with arms, I'm like, curls, push downs. Perfect. So let's, uh, let's just hope it's not too busy. The last thing you want to do is, uh, whoa, I thought that guy was in my lane for a second. The last thing you want to do is lose the pump mid workout due to just chatting. I mean, come on. Finish the lift and then hang out. That's always a that's always a bit of good approach in my eyes. So let's just get in there and get started. All right. So if you watched the last arm day, this might just be a complete repeat. I mean, I might change it up a little, but this is the exact same starting movement. Moderate weight, squeeze, burnout. Pretty basic buzzwords there. Not a crazy complicated starter. very different start than normal. Usually I like a 15 rep set with like 345 slaps on the side. But I've been liking these slower squeezing starting sets. Either way, let's hit one more and then get ready to do some curls. Dumbbell curls next. Let's just go crazy with the 75s. I must guillotine my fingers, re-racking that fucker. One more, same weight. Oh! <laughs> 
Okay, that's good. Holy shit. Okay. I don't think we need any more heavy sets like that. Let's go back to push downs. Slight change. I'm gonna come back to that handle, but the stack itself is a little light. So doing these sort of extra long D handle push downs, it's much more difficult. I'm not gonna be throwing three plates onto this. The stack is enough. So two here with these, then back to some kind of curl. Let's do some preachers. Okay, 225s on each side. I did one feeler rep, that was too heavy. That was too heavy. So I think a 25 to 10, that'll be a good weight. This will be a, this is a pretty, this is a movement that calls for control. Like with those dumbbell curls, I don't mind some nasty swinging at the end just for an extra rep, but with these, I want to be pretty controlled. This is kind of a freaky movement. The last thing I want to do is bring up some heavy weight and just drop it. I mean, we've all seen the bicep videos. So let's just pick a song and go fucking nuts. One more, same way. I might come back to this, but let's go get some pushdowns going next. I'd say we're near the halfway mark. Get comfortable. Honestly, this might be the last tricep movement that I do. I'm not saying it's the last set, but really at this point of fatigue, something about this handle specifically, I don't even know. I just love it. Really good squeeze to the bottom. So two here, and then back to some kind of curl. Very basic approach.
All right, that whole first speech was stupid. I'm gonna switch handles, but that did feel pretty good. I just wanna do a little something else next. Okay, so for this one, instead of that double arm, I'll do one, one arm at a time. So five reps on the right arm, five on the left, back and forth, back and forth. And the weight, I'm not trying to push. Like this is less than half the stack. The whole thing's 100, this is 30. I'm really just trying to squeeze at the bottom as hard as possible. Then after this, some kind of curl. One more. So, perfect example. I think it may have to do with my elbow mechanics. Like this, my arm is at a little bit of a different angle than the left one. But the right tricep is a little bit behind strength-wise. So if you could tell that last set with the right arm, that was fucking hard. But the left one looked kind of easy. So that's always my approach with kind of trying to balance out imbalances, right? Match the strong side's reps with the weak side to failure. So if your right bicep's extra small, you can get 20 reps. Even if you can get 30 on the left one, I'm gonna stop at 20. But let's move on to another kind of curl. And preachers again, actually. Oh my God. One more. Fuck. I think we are very nearly done. Maybe, yeah, two more sets of pushdowns, two more curls. Probably easy bar if I had to guess. Then we can check the pump and get out of here. This is a pretty quick one. Honestly, by the time I'm totally done, the actual working sets themselves probably won't even like, wouldn't even have taken longer than an hour. I guess I'll have to look at the clock when we're done. Let's get the rope out of retirement. It's been a little while since I've done some heavy rope reps. So the rope is cool. I do like using like even half a stack of both arms and really squeezing, but I don't think that's the only way you can use the rope. I kind of like a bit of a power push down in a way. So this will be kind of a tension exhaustion based set. I'm not sitting here with perfectly stretched form. Squeeze up, squeeze. I'm kind of going to be like using a little bit of body momentum to throw the weight around, but the fatigue I'm going to get in my triceps, I don't think it can be argued with, even if it's maybe not the most, well, even if it's not necessarily a set you'd see all the time. 
but I think two drop sets here. So, you know, I'll burn out with the sack, then drop the weight by maybe even half and do some more controlled reps. But after two of these, and then two more sets of curls, arms are done. Okay. All right, I lied. No drop set necessary. All right, I'm not gonna make this last set as simple as well, the last set. So same thing, pre-exhaust with the rope, you know, burn out, do a little bit of partials, but then switch handles, throw this guy on here. If you know anything about lifting, you know that you're much weaker with the rope than you are with the push down. So for me to swap handles, even if I can, I can only get like a couple partials with the rope, I'll be able to get a couple more solid reps with this guy. Okay, that's enough. That was perfect. Try is fully cooked. Let's just get buys up a couple more degrees and then check the pump. Look, do not get me wrong. There is merit in a lightweight controlled set. I'm sitting here. Good squeeze, back down slow controlled. Good squeeze, back down slow controlled. Do not think I don't think that. But on the opposite side of that spectrum, right? If slow controlled squeezing sets are over here, moderate weight, then Maybe a little heavier weight, kind of brutish sets, using a little bit of body language. That's over here. And I've recently heard the argument that it's not beneficial to do sets with a little bit of swinging and body language because you're wasting extra energy, which I like the logic. Like the idea would be if I do a set with the 60s, really slow and controlled, right? Then all the air that I'm breathing, most of it at least, is getting used to reoxygenate just my biceps instead of maybe some lower back and some shoulders when I swing a little bit. But come on, the feeling of a set like this, I know for a fact I'm gonna finish this lift with a better bicep pump if I do two sets with the 110s, kind of brutish, rather than two sets with the 50s or the 60s, slow and controlled. And I'm not saying that's a universal rule for everybody, that's just how I like doing it. And you gotta remember, I'm the one who feels every arm day I've ever had. So at least for me, it is based on a little bit of evidence. Maybe not scientifically studied, peer reviewed evidence, but for me, solid evidence nonetheless. <sighs> <sighs> One more, and probably a drop set for the last one. Oof. Oh my God. Okay. 
I lied. No drop set necessary. Arms are done. Let's go pose down. Okay. So what was that? Eight sets for buys, eight for tries. I'm pretty satisfied with that amount of volume. Let's see if the pump reflects that satisfaction. And spoiler alert, it does. <laughs> spoiler alert, it does. Actually, that's not even a spoiler. We all know how these videos end. With a fucking gnarly pump. And a couple of holy shits. Oh, man. Morning weight, 252.4. So, we're getting there. 260 has never been closer. It has truly never been closer. Not that I care. Like, it's not like I want a specific number, size. But, 260 is a pretty cool number. I'm not sure if you're aware, but 260 on a 5 foot 11 frame, that's not nothing. So, let's... uh. Let's just see how we're looking posing down. Oh, oh my goodness. Honestly, not the best pump ever. It's been better than this, but come on. It's still pretty nuts. I really need to bring the tape measure in. Give me, uh, give me a few days. Maybe I'll remember. Oh my goodness. Look, lat spread with a back pump is sweet, but honestly, lat spread with an arm pump is way fucking cooler. Dude. Oh my goodness. I mean, with tries pump still really all this in out on the sides. <laughs> I am incredibly fucking satisfied. But never content. There's always room for more poundage on these limbs. But let's get out of here. Good lift. Okay, I can't help it. <laughs> Sick. All right, you know what? That, uh, <laughs> that pose down just goes to show how fucking spoiled I am. Honestly, that arm pump was just as good as the last one I had, but I think I'm so used to just like each, you know, week to week pumps being better and better and better. The fact that it was still pretty similar kind of made me think like, oh, it should be even, even bigger than this. That was a good lift. Do not get me wrong. So now I'm fucking hungry. If you were curious about the, um, the pre-workout meal, Two packs of chicken ramen and an eight ounce sirloin, the likes of which I, uh, I undercooked a little bit, but I had already cleaned the pan. So instead of re-searing it for a few more minutes, I just gave it 45 seconds in the microwave and that was too long. I overcooked it and I kind of have a gray piece of shit. So not my, not my best work. Not my best work, I'll admit it. But still, 50 grams of protein, about 40 grams of fat, and 100 grams of carbs, with a ton of fucking electrolytes, aka salt, from not only the steak, but also the ramen. I didn't drink the broth, but even just in the noodles, that's, a, that's at least a, I don't know, what do you think? 500 milligrams of sodium or so, combined with, um, you know, maybe an hour or two later when I drank the pre, a liter of water. That is a, well, I mean, we just saw the result. That's a combination for success in my book. So now I gotta go home and eat. Uh, what exactly is that gonna be? Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll stop at Kane's. Dude, I am not joking. I think it was either last, no. Yeah, yeah it was last night before I did back. At like 6 o'clock, I got a Kaniac, three extra tenders, three extra pieces of bread, and some extra sauce, and a big, a fucking big-ass Sprite. That was like a two and a half thousand calorie meal. Actually, no, that's probably not true. Two thousand? I don't know. A big chunk of change, nevertheless. 
And after I finished it, I just passed out. <laughs> like when I woke up, I was in such a deep sleep. Maybe it was from the, uh, the chicken. I'm like 96% sure chicken has a little bit of melatonin in it. Any poultry. But either way, I was in like such a deep sleep. I thought I slept through the night and woke up the next day and totally missed the back day. But no, I just woke up at like 9 o'clock or so. So all was well. Maybe that should be my... Maybe if I ever do go out and buy that, it should be the last meal of the day. Just so I can get a, um, a good night's rest. No, one thing worth bringing up. I see a lot of comments like this. Why isn't... So this is to do with, you know, Hostile, right? The supplement company I'm working with. Me and Fuad and Ben and the whole crew over there. Why isn't Sam doing any other podcasts? Why isn't Sam collabing with every fitness influencer known to man? Is, is, it, is it in the contract? No, oh, man, I just like keeping it simple. You know, I think if you've seen... <laughs> I mean, if you look at this fucking YouTube channel, right? This is a very cut and dry... I mean, th these aren't even videos. They're kind of like just documentaries of each lift. And sometimes the food that I eat. Uh, I'm a little bit lazy, so mainly it's just the lifts. But, I mean, how many videos are there now? Like 300? 300 lifts, right? It's kind of like... I don't know. It's sort of... Uh, it's contradictory, right? To post videos and like want to get a lot of attention. I mean, that's not the point, but like, you know, these videos are getting seen by tons of freaking dudes all over the place. But to kind of have that be... Not offset, but maybe counterbalanced by kind of... You know, wanting to keep it in my own lane. I could get how I could be a little bit, um, maybe just a little tricky to wrap your noggin around. But I don't know, man, I like it. I'll, I'll float around. There's eventually going to be all sorts of character interactions or so. But you got to remember, right? how are you going to get through traffic quickest? By fucking swerving around, interacting with all sorts of other cars, or just staying in one open lane and cruising? Like, that would be cool seeing all these dudes. But you gotta remember, the grind, as long as you can keep that really consistent, it's almost like, it's almost like motivation and effort don't even come into play. And what I'm trying to say there is like, if you can get yourself into a routine and into a very, I don't wanna say rigid, because sometimes I lift at like 2 a.m. and sometimes I lift at like 3 o'clock like I do now. But if you can get into a state of being able to, you know, practice something, of course, if I'm talking about something, it's going to be weightlifting, right? And do it day, 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 to the point where it's not even a question that you're going to do it. And it doesn't matter if some days you feel like shit or if some days you're fucking, you know, you got, the, you got more motivation than anybody in the fucking world. Right? If it's just in your nature where it's like, all right, I'm going to the gym today regardless of fucking anything, then over time, that's going to be your best bet. You know? So, maybe subconsciously, I'm just trying to limit distractions. But I don't know, I'm not a fucking psychiatrist. And if you try to, you know, think about that with your own mind, it gets kind of tricky because you're sort of biased as whatever. Whatever. So, that's kind of the deal there. I just like, I mean, it's cool for me. Because you got to remember, I feel like I'm more of um, I think there's a lot of people making fitness content. There's a lot of people making any kind of shit on social media. Where the point is just to get views and get attention. You know, I mean, I think by now we've all seen the video where like this kind of teenage kid, he's in his car and he's like, the gym said I can't bring my tripod in anymore. That's half the reason I even go to the gym. Uh, <laughs> I mean, dude, come on. You have missed the point by miles. By fucking miles. You know, don't forget, if there was no camera around, I still would have gone in and got that crazy arm day. Right? I've, uh, you gotta remember, for as many lifts as you've seen, so you, I've been dragging you guys around for like, for the YouTube videos for like a year. A little longer, like just barely a year. The TikTok was like six months before then. But that's only the last year and a half. 
there was three and a half years of just day in day out lifts first you know so if that gives you any insight into maybe my uh mental state or my kind of approach to this kind of stuff but good arm day man i think that that is going to be the style of arm day for many lifts to come I mean, just everything about it is sick. For a while, I didn't, in my mind, I didn't want to do that kind of workout where I go back and forth between muscle groups because my bro science logic was, well, I want to focus on just one muscle group at once and totally destroy it and then move on to the next one, which I like it. That makes sense in my mind. It kind of makes me think, okay, that's a good approach. All right. But then doing a lift like that, which goes completely against that logic, where it's like, you know, two hard sets for one muscle group and then give it two sets worth of rest while you hit the other one. It's, you know, I don't think that goes to show that one style is superior to the other. I think a lot of people could, or a lot of people kind of jump the gun and make assumptions like that. Like this kind of, this way to do it is the best. This way is not good at all. That is stupid. Don't even think about it. You're a loser if you do it like that. Right? I think that's how a lot of people can kind of classify different styles of working out you know like dudes who are really diehard strict form lifters they're gonna shit on you if you do some dirty reps and get some swinging partials right? and then vice versa all the like quote unquote ego lifter characters are gonna be making fun of the guys going very controlled squeezing reps because they're like come on man are you even pushing yourself I think the if I'm being honest, the strict lifter side is probably a little bit more correct, right? The ego lifter kind of swinging the weight around side, that has its place, but you got to do that in moderation. I know that's kind of crazy coming from my mouth, but you know, let's, uh, let's just be real. Uh, ooh, so the enlightened lifter, he's not going to see people training in different ways and think, okay, this is correct and this is incorrect. He's going to see that multiple people are training in totally different ways and still getting results. And that's going to make him say, oh, shit, there's multiple ways to fucking do this. There's not just one specific way. Okay, cool. So if I want to add variability to my training, I can do all sorts of different stuff. I can do all of one muscle group at once. I can superset. I can do a lot of straight sets. I can do some drop sets. I can do pause reps. Uh, I can do like uh, rest pause sets where I do like 10 reps rack the weight, wait like 20 seconds, and then do another five, and then wait to do another three. It's, you know, there's a lot of different ways to go about doing a hard set. And really, I think that's all you should be aiming for, right? No matter what kind of style of sets you're doing. Now, I'm not going to say you could, obviously, if you did like dumbbell curls with five pound dumbbells for like a billion reps, I don't know if that's really the best way to go about it. So I'm not saying you could do absolutely anything but there's a pretty wide array of, of styles of sets, which if you push it hard, it's going to be conducive with progress. Either muscle maintenance and strength maintenance if you're trying to diet down, aka you're going to keep muscle in your frame while burning fat when you're in your calorie deficit, or muscle growth when you eat in a calorie surplus. Right? It'll be enough stimulus to whatever muscle you just hit that when you go home and you eat your fucking steaks and protein powders and rice and fish and milk and cereal and whatever the hell else you're eating, then those nutrients are going to get partitioned at least a good chunk towards, you know, getting closer to those 18, 19, 20 inch biceps, which that sounds good to me. So main takeaway I'm trying to sort of preach about is you can go about this shit in a lot of different ways. So don't get too locked into one specific idea of what you're doing. Right. Make sure you uh, make sure you keep an open mind. You know, the guy who can kind of try to th see things from other people's perspectives and be open to new ideas, he is going to have a much better time making progress and improving as a lifter. And you know what? Not even just as a lifter, as a fucking dude. That kind of approach to life is just pretty fucking cool. So I think that's the end of my uh, post-arm day speech. Home food, more food. I think I, I'm, no, I, I don't think I do have a final tomorrow for my little sprint course. 
so I'm gonna have to learn about heat transfer. I'm a total, oh, my stunning habits are not something you should emulate. I think you should try to emulate, um, you know, doing, doing cardio every day for 30 minutes, pushing your sets nice and hard, right? Eating your gram per pound of protein, checking your pump, being happy with it. Do not emulate my studying habits. Oh my goodness. But that's enough for me. Let's, uh, let me just let you get back to eating your food or doing your cardio or going to sleep. You better not be losing sleep watching this, man. Because you're not just losing sleep. You're losing out on gains. Right? Get to bed. Get into that REM cycle ASAP. So I'll see you next time, man.